This is Frank Islam, Chairman and CEO of FY Investment Group and your host of Washington Calling, where we interview leading voices from business and politics that impact you, the viewer. Today, our guest is Ms. Anusia Gupta. She's the Chairperson and Managing Director of Cisco Group, a large and legacy construction industry firm. Thank you for coming to our show and welcome to our show. Um, Thank, thank you very much for coming to our show. Thank you for all you do to make a difference. Thank you very much, Frank. I just wanted to make a little uh, change. It's Seco and not Cisco. It's Seco Group. Yeah. And okay. it's very an well honor and a privilege. Be, yeah. And it's an honor and a privilege to be with you on this show. Thank you very much. You're, you're wonderful. And thank you for your correction. Obviously, I was mistaken. So tell us a little bit about your you have a remarkable success story we understand you're heading a construction company which is a business dominated by men please tell us briefly your success story for our global audience and tell us a little yeah, bit thanks. about your company as well go All ahead right so seco is really the oldest brand in india we're celebrating 90 years uh, this year uh, the brand was started way back in 1930 in Calcutta by my husband's uh, grandfather. And okay. uh, really, yeah, and we had a monopoly uh, in construction chemicals, especially waterproofing grounds, uh, till about the late 1980s. Uh, that's when I think India opened out and a lot of multinationals started coming in. But however, we still remain one of the top five uh, in the country. Um, as far as, you know, and in any case, or like all traditional business houses, this was also a very male dominated uh, business in the sense that the ladies of the house did not ever inherit the business. The business always went down the male line. But uh, unfortunately, my husband uh, ha tragically passed away uh, 12 years ago. And uh, I always call myself an accidental entrepreneur. So I stepped into <laughs> his shoes. <laughs> I've been so, so, uh, a homemaker. Yeah. Uh, you're, a, a you're a homemaker. You're a homemaker, Completely. right? Okay, and a very wonderful. Happy well, thank you. Well, thank you very, very I, much. Uh, you step into the. We need people like you in India, not only India, but around the world to look at you. Female entrepreneurship is very key to success of not only India, right. but all the world. So tell us a little bit about your accomplishment, what have been your guiding principles, and what is your definition of success? Oh, that's a very difficult one. But, uh, <laughs> well, all I can say is that, um, you know, I being a homemaker, I think I did carry the home values into the workplace. Um, I think that made a little bit of a difference because when a woman brings their home values into the place of work, um, it's it's just expanding the same home base uh, and and also considering that your family is also the team and uh, and the organization, the people who work for you are also part of your family. Now that I think helped me, to be honest, to take this company um, to the next height. Also, I think I grew up with uh with, with knowing my self-worth and uh knowing my rights and so i do work within that framework and even if it's a male dominated industry and um you know uh i think i think do we do score on those parts because i think uh, we we ensure that we are working within that and so i think those are those were my advantages but having said that the industry when you say success, I think there, there was a little bit of experience gap and there still is because in India, we lack the infrastructure for women to get into uh, their place of work. And by infrastructure, I mean, you know, I can talk from my own experience. 
I can never go to a site and not because it's difficult to check out a tunneling work on the roads or to get right on top of a bridge to see you know what the work in progress is but also because there are no washroom facilities there are no facilities for me to stay at night and therefore I am not able to then check out on what exactly is the quality of work that's happening and you know what really goes on in the site so to me i think that's a bit of a challenge and it's not going to encourage more women to come in if these facilities and the infrastructure is not there uh, in the country right very well said do you think the entrepreneurs are made or born <laughs> <laughs> and, i was not born also, for sure. <laughs> okay do you what are the characteristics of the entrepreneur do you think the success have taught you to move forward and the failure have taught you to never go backward i i'm an entrepreneur myself as you probably know i know i know and a very successful one at that um i think i think entrepreneurship just teaches you um how to take on more responsibilities and i think that responsibility is a lot of social responsibility it's not just looking at profit margins and the balance sheets to be honest i mean i take my, my role very seriously as someone who's contributing to society in terms of very not well. just not just employment or uh, stuff like that but you know say for instance our products go into buildings go into roads go into power stations if i am not going to be doing justice to that and uh, you know ensuring service is good quality of products is good then it's impacting society so basically i think that an entrepreneur needs to have that social uh, you know uh, thought in mind very well said and i will talk to you about your philanthropic engagement as well in a minute i am a philanthropist and and mm -hmm. uh, i believe what president person kennedy has said to whom much is given much is expected and the yeah. characteristic of an entrepreneur that i see is to is to venture into the new horizon and experiment new environment willing to take a risk and and see uh, what the people see as a challenge you see as an opportunity which is what you have done and thank you very much for all you have done and you are a role model for all of us, not only in India, Thank but all around the globe. As you know, Thank the you for this. Uh, uh, yeah, sure, you're most welcome. Um, construction industry should be booming in India. It should be growth yeah. industry should providing the jobs in India. But we understand that your construction company are not doing very well because of the huge layoff as the economy of India is doing is in tank right now. We'll talk about that what what is the problem what needs to be done and also tell us a little bit about the regulation regulating the real estate industry is it helping you or hurting you okay Go so ahead. there's approximately yeah so there's approximately a 12 percent drop in order wins by infra companies and you know the rating agencies have consistently been downgrading our forecast for great growth and my sense is that until and unless there is a fund flow from the government into this particular industry the gloom will continue because this is the foundation industry you know it's it's the base it is a huge job uh, creator so if there is a fund flow that come is coming into this industry my sense is that the others will you know to kick start the other industries as well uh, when you've talk and talked about regulations i think the regulators were necessary it really was necessary because there was a lot of uh, consumer stress because it was market driven and that sort of thing but i think what happened was it came very fast and quick in india we we are a large large economy so you know before it was standardized tested you know cost corrections made we were heaped on with the next one and the next one and the next one so i think what happened was consumer paranoia set in that consumer paranoia i think resulted also in um, uh, i would say distressed sales low quality products being sold in a hurry to sort of finish projects and so you know in general until and unless there is a policy consistency and uh, uh and you know infusion of incentives i think it's a long road uh, to recovery it's a long road to recovery did you tell that to to the current government which is a basically uh, should have a unifying nationalism rather than religious nationalism 
the light of human <laughs> democracy is flickering, is flickering while the yeah. fire of discord is burning. Did well, you, I wish and actually. And you have a voice. Go ahead. Um, Frank, actually, I wish I wish the government would talk to the SMEs. To be honest, because I think we are really, you know, the belly of the economy. Um, I think they mean they must necessarily pause and talk to the small medium enterprises to see what is uh, what is the need of the R and what are the things that we really need. And and I think it's important that this trust deficiency. You know, the gap is closed very, very quickly. And uh, there is a sizable scale up in infrastructure uh, spends right now. Um, I also think that close projects close need to trillion to be dollar. Close yeah, to exactly. trillion dollar India needs for infrastructure. Yeah. So, so do, is, you, do you speak up? Do you speak up and speak out and tell the government uh, that we need to work together so that we can build a stronger and better India? And provide a job to the to the young generations. I would love to. I would love to. Because that uh, you know you need a platform, right? And and that right. platform has to be created to be able to speak up. You know, just an individual voice. I don't think. Uh, I mean, who do I talk to? To be honest, uh, to the government. Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, who the government do we talk to? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, so think, I, wanna... I think there are. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the, the, so that we need, you need a platform to speak up or to speak mm -hmm. out to make, and you're doing it because so you can build a stronger and fairer and just and as well as a better India, so that people can have a job and prosperity. Yeah, this absolutely. is what all. Okay, so as you know, the Indian economy. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, so there's uh, a huge Gold. challenge pool and opportunity. All we need to do is you know just tap into that. Right. Uh, as you know, the Indian economy is not doing well, and you said that, and the outlook is is likely to continue. There has not been that much infusion of direct foreign investment. India is facing the largest unemployment rate. It has been it has a lower GDP growth in eleven years. Can you tell us uh, and shed some bright lights? What what can be done to boost economic growth and create more jobs and build prosperity, and also build the infrastructure? and attract foreign investment. Disbursements over there has to be quick. Now, while we are also talking about uh, cash, uh, uh, awarding those projects, I think simultaneously, the compliances like, for instance, environment clearances, um, land acquisition bills, etc., those have to be attacked simultaneously to ensure that those projects are taking off on time and um, and and therefore, this is the way that employment, you know, it, it'll kickstart the supply chain. The production will start, manufacturing units will start, you know, and the entire cycle will take off. The other thing that I have uh, really in my mind, and it's a very personal um, belief, is that we have to increase the tax base in our country. At this moment in 1718, if I'm not mistaken, I was reading somewhere that 55 million people um, filed their income tax returns of which 22 million did not have any tax liability now can you believe that if we <laughs> yeah so if we don't increase our tax base you know where is the money going to come in from we cannot keep taxing the one percent you know uh, all the time we have to sort of broad base it a little more and that's really my personal take that the government needs to do this uh, right now simultaneously with awarding of these uh, road projects and power plants etc which are all stalled and which will then you know start off on other cities other one cities come up to a two a tier two tier three cities you're going to need hotels you're going to need uh, hospitals you're going to need schools so it's it's this is the industry that needs attention completely i totally agree you should move to dubai look at the what dubai is doing it's unbelievable yeah. eh? in yeah, terms of the construction true. and it's being shouldered yeah. by the indian diaspora pretty much yeah yeah well i go there every uh, i go there every six months because i'm on the board of trustees of the american university in dubai uh, and it's unbelievable what they have been able to accomplish. I do Fantastic. not believe in their. Uh, uh, so it's unbelievable. I wanted to. Uh, uh, you look at the brighter horizon, even when 
we endure storm and and that's the that's the characteristic of your personality who you are which is a wonderful thing to do i i would hope that the other people will follow in your direct in your footsteps so they can make a difference you have been honored as a woman entrepreneur by dell you embody the hope for a budding female and for that matter for all entrepreneurs what are your thoughts in the future of women entrepreneurship in india what advice would you give it to the young and a budding entrepreneurs i think the first thing is that uh, as somebody in i would like to say in a position of privilege at this moment uh, it's important for all of us women who enjoy this to sort of reach out and give a leg up to the other women who are actually trying to do that uh, this is something that i find a little lacking here we need to help one another that's one secondly the ecosystem here in india has to change in terms of you know uh, i see that there is a lot to be done in the rural segment where the talent pool is huge however our norms are very archaic societal pressures are huge so we need to take education and we need to take inclusive inclusion uh, all that to to people but i have to say the good thing really is that uh, you know social media is helping uh, a lot because they are able to actually uh, access what is going on in the world and what is available understand women's rights etc uh, bollywood i have to say mirrors a lot of opportunities uh, and you know in our villages and in our uh, urban as well as uh, you know the rural sector this is a big you know mover and shaker so there it does uh, mirror a lot of it so it's helping us i have to say things like it started moving in terms of property rights that are now coming into uh, you know into the legal framework uh, of women because until and unless you have property which then can act as a collateral to starting any entrepreneurship or any business that's important education needs to be taken um to to these well. people because yeah and financial decision making has to be far more inclusive it cannot only be uh, in a male dominated uh, world if you see adver- ads in the newspapers or ads in uh, televisions which i see it's very often that uh, you know the woman can choose uh, the washing machine but it's always the man who chooses uh, you know which brand depending on you know how how expensive or how cheap it is so i think financial decision making you're absolutely right i am all for the uh, uh, women entrepreneurship i believe that they have the enormous potential that the india and the world can harness and this has been untapped potential so uh, so that women can can get out of their house and become a role model for others and uh, what india needs to do is also to help them with the finance so that they, and also become a role model and there's many many things that people like you can help uh, this female entrepreneurship because they have the untapped potential and their potential is enormous don't you agree with that yeah, yeah completely uh, because i think a woman whatever she earns she brings back and rolls back into the business you know uh, statistics says that so um, it's an ongoing process uh, which then gives a far far better returns they need to be full partner in making a difference yeah yeah and, and, and that has not been yeah Go that's ahead. right yeah uh, yeah so, so i have written many uh, i have written many yeah, many that's... columns on female entrepreneurship uh, there how they can become a change agent uh, before i close the conversation i know you are a horse lover you have a, obviously your privilege to have a horses and i live very close to washington dc where it's in middleburg virginia which is the horse country and a lot of our friends uh, have that uh, uh, horses so I want you to talk a little bit but the most important thing I want to talk about philanthropy what kind of things are you doing to make a difference and what are your areas of focus in philanthropy is philanthropy is not uh, just a giving and building a mosque building a church or building a temple is to making a difference in people's lives so tell us a little bit about both the, before we close the conversation ms gupta yeah So which one do you want me to talk first about should I talk about the philanthropy bit? It's up it's up to you. Yeah. It's up to you. You t- you go first. So this is one of my 
well, this is my passion, really. Um, as I said, I'm an accidental entrepreneur, but this is my passion. Uh, I grew up in a convent where we always did work for um, you know, the less privileged, so to speak. But what also life taught me is that when my husband was unwell, we I moved from hospital to hospital um, and I actually saw the despair that was there amongst the millions of people who used to come for treatment there. I thought I was privileged because I had the resources and I don't mean monetary resources. I mean my education, my access to doctors, etc. cetera. Um, so in 2009, after, his, after my husband's passing away, I started a foundation in his memory where the work we do is to raise awareness for organ donation in India. We have a crying need. I mean, the last that I know is that we were like 0.03 per million uh, for organ donation, and the needle was 1.8 1, 1 per million or something like that. I could be a little wrong in my statistics, but somewhat like that. So my aim really and the foundation's aim is to go to different corporates, to police stations, you know, which ha handle a lot of accident cases, to NGOs, to schools and talk about the importance of pledging organs so that when we are no more, there are other lives that we are saving. So that's very one well of the said. Very well said. That, we, that we do because in India, we need that hugely. Um, so you're other than the your fact hope, your, you're extending your hope, your heart, and your help to those who need the yeah. most. And that's the yes. noble cause yeah. they became. That uh, th those are things that we will leave behind because we have a short time on this planet of Earth. Yes, that's so right. So go out and yeah. tell us about your horse thing. You know, you're a horse lover. <laughs> How many horses you have? And well, where, at the where moment, is the we have, uh, No, no, no. Yeah. I think we, you know, horse horse racing has been the family for many generations. And uh, so I, I wanted to say uh, something very interesting because in 1962, sure. Queen Elizabeth. Uh, visited Calcutta to present the Queen's Cup and in that oh. uh, race, yeah and in that race two of our horses were running uh, which my was owned goodness. by my 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 father-in-law and 50 years later we run in the same colors that we did run those races so that's a matter of pride and joy for us that the colors yes, of the yes. Gupta family are the same uh, that they run in um it's it's you know we're animal lovers i love my dogs i and the ho and horse racing is as i said a passion with us and we love the sport and the fourth generation has also joined in and you know enjoys the sport so uh, you know fingers uh, crossed we carry this forward <laughs> yeah so so where is your farm the farm is located close to delhi or somewhere in Kolkata? no we don't have a farm uh, our horse is trained with our trainers mainly in calcutta Okay, so they have a stable there. Yeah. That's right? True. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, is there anything else you want to say to the audience uh, before we close our conversation? No, just that I'm very, very privileged uh, to be here. Oh. And I feel, uh, and I think I'm, I'm very grateful really to the to the universe for giving me opportunities that I have and I hope that I can leave behind and share some of my experiences with people which will help others that's you know that's my only hope and wish sure. uh, for me very well said is the your family has provided you the letters of opportunity to succeed and you want other people to succeed that's what you want to do so thank you very much Ms. Gupta for all you do and thank you very much for your leadership. And this is Frank Islam wishing you a great week and thank you for watching.